The last word, the last breath, was in full cry. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. But this is not a request. This is an announcement that the Son is returning to the Father. The Son sent to the world will go back to the Father. And so the seventh word, the last word of Christ on the cross, is a word of reunion. The Son sent will now return to the sender. What a beautiful occasion that at his last breath, he will return to the Father. And the return signals the completion of the mission of the Son. It signals that everything has finished. Beautiful in the sixth word that Jesus has told the people, it is finished. And when it is finished, it is logical that one returns to the sender. And the Son, in his whole life, in his whole ministry, never faltered in his belief to the Father. But the most interesting part would be, it was spoken in a moment of grief. It was spoken in a time of misery. In a time we call the edge of life. And in a time we call at the edge of death. What beautiful words that will come out of our Savior. That will define his life. And so his death was the definition of his life and mission. The beauty of his life finds culmination in the beauty of the last words. One time I was assigned in our SVD mountain missions and then I was sent. And so there was fear for a young missionary. I was told that I, am go that I will be fetched by one of the tribe leaders. And so I had to walk to go to the mountains. Almost two hours of walking in the middle of feeling of fear. An armed man came suddenly in the middle of the forest. Then came a battalion of them. And then they were asking, who are you? What are you doing here in the mountains? Uh, I'm a seminarian. I, I am on an exposure. Oh, that's impossible. But someone sent me here. The tribe leader will fetch me somewhere in the mountains. I was already crying, but these armed men will not believe. Oh, I don't think you're a religious. Bigote mo palang, hindi na kami maniniwala. Then I started crying because I was so helpless. But then the promise that someone will fetch me came in to rescue. So the tribe leader came and they said, Oh, he is our boy. And so that moment of reunion to someone who was promised, it was a celebration of trust. It was a celebration of someone who was promised. All the while of insecurity, I was with him. And so the Lord in the cross is celebrating that trust, that confidence to the one who sent him. But this is not only the victory of someone who is in the cross, the victor on the cross. This is the victor of us all. The Eucharistic prayer 3 says, Father, calling to mind the death your son has endured for our salvation, whose victim has reconciled us to yourself. And so it is not only the son returning to the father. This is a celebration of our return to the father. If the son is victorious on the cross, then we are victorious on the cross. And so this is not only a celebration of the Son returning to the Father, but a people He has won, a people He has gained for the Father. Today, 
Victory has come. Today, salvation has come. And so everybody must have that prayer. Father, into your hands, I commend my spirit. First John says, Do not love the world or the things of the world. The love of the Father is not in those who love the world. I lived a life in the world and in the flesh and believed I was living life fully. Many trials and difficulties have come my way, and I dealt with these in my own way arrogantly believing that I could solve all my problems on my own without anybody's help. How terribly wrong I was. I have been married three times. Hindi ko po ito pinagyayabang. In fact, kinahihiya ko po ito. For it was a life lived very far away from the Lord. I lived my life making decisions and choices based on my own worldly desires. At the age of 20, I married my college boyfriend. We lived with my husband's family. And after two years, with my parents' help, we lived in our own home. My husband had much difficulty adjusting to life away from his family home. And after about a year, our marriage started to erode because of my nagging about being the sole family breadwinner while he continued to his schooling. One day, I was just informed that my husband would no longer be living with us. My response was, Buti nga, kaya namin mag-ina, mabuhay na wala siya. Ang yabang ko talaga. After a year, we tried to reconcile, but found that our lives had drifted so far apart, we decided it was of no use. At the young age of 27, my husband had a fatal heart attack. He was too young. I grieved over our lost love and life together. It was a blessing that before he died, he was able to enjoy a close relationship with our son. A few years later, I married Joseph, an American. My son was so happy to finally have a complete family. I was so in love and truly believed that we were made for each other. Mali pala. A few months after our wedding, Joseph told me he didn't love me anymore. This would be the first of many times that he would Tell me this. Wala na raw fireworks when we kissed. Ang babaw, ano? I would argue that real love is more than fireworks. Love is not just a feeling or an emotion. It is a decision. In a marriage, loving involves caring, concern, a willingness to sacrifice for each other. I was determined to make our marriage work. When Joseph was assigned to London, I left my family, my career, and moved to make a new home for our little family. I exerted all my efforts to be the perfect wife, the perfect homemaker and mother. Parang I had to justify my existence in Joseph's life. I was a full-time housewife for the first time in my life. Mahira pala ang trabahong simple housewife. Tagaluto, tagalaba, Tagalinis, electrician, mechanic, at kung ano pang kailangan gawin sa bahay. Tapos, wala pang thank you after a job is well done. But no matter how hard I tried, Joseph was unhappy in our marriage. He believed he had to find himself and his soulmate. After two years of being rejected by the man I loved, I got so emotionally drained 
trying to prove that I was worth loving and our marriage worth saving, that I finally decided to go home. I returned to the Philippines broken and hurt, a failure in the marriage I sincerely wanted to succeed. I immersed myself in work to support and provide for my growing son. I started to socialize again and enjoy the world and its pleasures. I was blinded by my emptiness, and like a lamb lost in the wilderness, I fell again. I got married a third time to Stan. I realized that ours was a rebound relationship. I was still hurting from all the rejection and emotional abuse I experienced with Joseph, that I jumped from the frying pan right into the fire. I was blind to Stan's faults, his alcoholism, his need to be the center of the party. Ours was a life of constant socializing, always partying because it was good for the business. We were blessed with a son, and he became the center of my life. While I wanted to spend more time with our little family, Stan only wanted to party. What a terrible mess I had made of my life. I was the result of all the wrong choices I had made. I was nearing 50, 50 years, and I enjoyed everything the world could offer. But my life was an empty, gaping hole. For all these many years, I had been seeking completeness in relationships that were led by the flesh and earthly desires. I could not take the pain and mess of my life any longer, and I cried out to God, help me. I am tired of pretending and wearing this mask of I'm okay, kaya ko itong lahat. I'm so ashamed of the ugliness and sins in my life. Only you can help me change this self-centered life of mine. The lost and empty life of mine opened up and like the Samaritan woman at the well with five husbands, Jesus cleansed my life and washed away the shabbiness of my life. With a heart full of sorrow and repentance for my sins, the Lord revealed his heart to me as an ocean of infinite mercy. I longed and I thirst for more of Jesus. I wanted a deeper and more meaningful relationship and this I found in Him. When I joined the Salt and Light for Christ community, through the sacraments, through scripture and daily prayer, Jesus called me by name, because you are precious in my eyes and because I love you. Jesus saved me and I give Him my life. I surrender to His will. I submit to Jesus' sovereignty over my life and I seek to live for his glory alone. Here I am, Lord, available to you, both now and in the future. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. <laughs>